All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am going to film at some car dealerships and I thought I'd take you guys along. My goal in February of 2023 is to post a vlog every Saturday sort of behind the scenes because I'm doing some fun stuff in February, so watch out for that. Today we are going to film at Toyota of Naperville as well as Chevy of Naperville and I'm going to walk you through that process. So it's about 8.20 right now. We have a 30 minute drive and most filming days at dealerships start at 9 a.m. So that should give us plenty of time. All right, so I am a touch early, which is how I like it to be. And the reason for that is that I always look for the cars that I'm going to film on the lot before going in and getting the keys, because many times they'll be at the shop or they'll be getting cleaned or sometimes they sell before they update the website. So quick and easy job today because I'm only filming one car at Toyota of Naperville and I see it, it is covered in snow which that's okay, it's a black 2022 Hyundai Elantra. I haven't done an Elantra in quite some time, so that'll be an interesting one. But now that I see it, it's here. I'll run inside and get the keys, and let me explain that part, because that part I can't show. So basically, I go inside and I give the media team or whoever's able to pull keys for me the stock numbers for the cars. This is what a typical stock number looks like from the dealerships. Now, every dealership has their own stock numbers. The reason I can't show you this process is A, I don't wanna stick a camera in their faces and be like, hey, well, what's this? You know, it's 9 a.m., give me a break. But the other reason is the fact that then we go to a key vault. Every dealership has a different key vault. We type it in and we get the keys. Now, I don't want to broadcast on the internet where they keep the key vault, how the key vault works and things like that, but here are a couple of them that I've seen. These are just Google stock images. Basically, it's a big black box. You put it in and then the drawer or door will open and there's usually like a red flashing light or something to show you where the key is because when you open it it's just like tens if not hundreds of keys all stocked in so i can't really show you this process for security reasons but toyota of neighborville is absolutely awesome and they give me pretty much free reign to review whatever i want on their lot so i just give them the stock number i sign a test drive release basically saying that i am going to be driving the car just like you would if you were going to test drive it and then i get on my merry way so let's cut to that So obviously the process is a little bit different in the winter time. Uh, this is the times that I hate the Midwest, but really it's only bad like this a couple days out of the year. I just chose this day to film this vlog. I don't have to scrape off cars every single day, but it's definitely happened the last two days. So <sighs> I can still see my breath a little bit in here. It's a little chilly. So we're gonna let the car warm up a little bit more. Then we're gonna grab the equipment and go to the test track, which I'm excited to show you. All right, I'm sure this angle is terrible, but there's not many places to put my phone here in the Hyundai Elantra. So we are pulling up to the Naperville test track. From what I'm aware of, this is the only <laughs> place in America that dealerships back in the mid 2000s got together with the city of Naperville and actually have its own designated gated off test track. It's not open to the public. The dealership gives me a key card to then access it. And it's a little track that has like some off-road parts, some hill parts that I'm showing footage here of, of course, in the summertime, which I am extremely envious of at the current moment. But this is where I film pretty much all my dealership reviews for Naperville Mazda, Gerald Subaru, Gerald Kia, Cadillac of Naperville, Toyota of Naperville, Chevy of Naperville, Lexus of Naperville, pretty much any of the Naperville dealerships I film out here on the test track. Now there's a slight issue today. They haven't plowed the test track. So this might be a little interesting, but here's the key card. And so the swipe in process is really easy. It's an automated gate. I didn't check to see if the windows will open. Oh, oh yes, they will.
there we go, gate goes up. So yeah, this is pretty uh, completely unplowed, so no acceleration test today. As you can see, this is all a sheet of ice. So not amazing conditions. We might have to cancel our second review of the day just because of this. All right, so we're out here on the test track and uh, you guys kind of know the drill at this point. So basically I'm gonna set up my camera stuff and the first thing that I do is the talking portion of the videos. So that is where you see my face and hear my voice. And so that is done with this, the in-car video. Whenever you see my face, unless it's like a setup tripod shot outside of the car, which I rarely do, except for when I did like my 900th review and my 1000th review, you're seeing it through the lens of a GoPro Hero 9 Black. Um, I'll probably upgrade this somewhat soon. I've had a couple uh, issues where it will stop recording randomly, which is obviously no good. If I do like single car video or like, if I film only one car a day, it will, uh, it's usually fine, but if I start to overwork it, it'll start just dropping recordings for no reason. But what can you do? Get this, this is my Zoom H1N audio recorder. This is a Rode Lavalier Go microphone. And basically it's funny, the dashboard of the Elantra is sort of censoring me because um, I have to stick it up my shirt, comes out the top, then we buckle up. You can't really see it, but this goes on to the seat belt. Or if the car doesn't have seat belts, like a 60s car, it just goes onto my shirt. So now we are ready to go. I'll pull out my... Oh, I would pull out my notes. <laughs> I was just looking for my phone. I'm filming with it. So I do have notes for each car. This is what they look like. Very, very simple, very basic. A lot of people ask if I have a script or if I have thoughts beforehand, and I really don't. I like the raw experience of getting into a car and saying what I feel at the moment. Um, so, so I'm, I'm gonna start, start the recording now. You might hear the audio switch over to a more crisp sound. Hopefully, that's the goal at least. We'll put that in the cup holder. We'll start up the GoPro, make sure. All right, and away we go. I'll, I'll let you hear me do the raw intro of this video adjust that up a little bit all right what's up guys my name is zach and today i am driving a 2022 hyundai elantra sel up front is a 2.0 liter inline four and down below is a cvt now i am super excited to be driving this here hyundai elantra because it's been a couple of years since i've done their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. And we're out. So that whole recording, let's see here, was 15 minutes and 35 seconds. 36, 37, 38 seconds. Um, so that's it. That's really the main talking portion. Now, I always film the back seat portion second, the trunk portion third, and those just get cut into the final edit. So let's go do those. So sometimes, and you can probably notice this in videos, I forget to actually pin the uh, microphone to my shirt, and sometimes I'll just be dangling there, but I try my best to make it look a little bit professionally. This part always sucks because I don't wanna wear a coat in the back seat for the video, I still have to get out and get back there, and it is 26 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, this is not going to be pleasurable, but that's okay. People have way harder jobs than I do, so I am not going to complain. Oh, this was still recording. Nice. Okay. You gotta set up the camera. There we go. All right. Top and the back. All right, so we're in the back of the 2022 Hyundai Elantra. All right, that's done. So then now we'll hop out and do the last talking portion of the video, which is the cargo space. I always film the cargo space last. I don't know why. I don't really have, well, I guess it's just easier. Yeah, that's the reason why, it's easier. Solve the mystery, Zach, way to go. And these days, I'm always putting the 
or my coat on in the back seat, looking at the test track and looking at the car because I can't get the ice off the hood. I thought the engine would be hot enough to melt it, but it's not. We're definitely, yeah, we're not gonna do the other car today just because it's not gonna be great conditions. Um, and the car is not gonna look great. And I could always access a Trailblazer from Chevy of Naperville, I'm not too worried about that. Um, but I don't really get Hyundais all that much, so this was a more uh, necessary video to make, so. Any hoozle, let's, uh, let's hop around the back. I'm gonna switch this microphone to the um, collar of my jacket. Before we do that, a little bit of inside info. Um, I switched the GoPro to the auto smoothing mode um, whenever I'm gonna go handheld. When it's attached to the windshield, the uh, hyper smooth feature of GoPros, it makes it look really weird. It makes it look like the mount's broken because it kind of has this like, ooh, like movement to it. There's like an interior gyro or whatever. Um, so when it's mounted to something, the hyper smooth looks really dumb, but on handheld, it makes it look a lot better. So if you're using a GoPro, that's my tip to you is to turn the auto smooth off if it's mounted to something, but handheld auto smooth helps a lot or hyper smooth, auto smooth, hyper smooth, whatever the stabilization feature is in these things. Um, yeah. So let's hop out. Let's do a trunk review. All right, so we're on the back of the Hyundai Elantra. Here we do have the key fob, press and hold, and it will release the trunk. Now, we do have to pop it up the rest of the way. We do get this nice cargo net, the nice Elantra badge, but also plenty of space back here. This is something that I really, really love about sedans is that space in the back. I can also pull this up. We do get a spare tire and some tools down there. Other than that, nothing really too crazy to write home about besides that I do have these pull tabs to release the back seats, but pretty standard stuff from there on out. Oh, 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 my savior. So now, I don't know if this guy with the plow is waiting for me to leave whatnot but normally i do the exterior first just in case rain comes out of nowhere or something but i'm freezing cold so i want to stay in here as long as possible so we're going to be filming the interior shots first um this is my canon sl3 you'll see pretty much um all the in-car footage well everything is filmed all the beauty shots are filmed with this but um, I use a 24 millimeter lens for the interior and some of the exterior shots. And then we'll switch to the uh, 55 to 250 millimeter lens for some of the outside shots and thumbnail. But I figured I'd talk to you guys while I film the interior to kind of multitask and get some stuff done. So a lot of you are probably wondering how I'm able to film at dealerships. How did that happen? Why do I film at dealerships and all that stuff? So I'm gonna try to answer those questions as best as possible. And I'll be honest, um talking and filming these interior shots is not super easy i'm starting to learn but i'll try my best so i started filming for dealerships about four years ago and funny enough toyota of naperville was actually one of my first clients um if you want to call them clients here's the thing i don't get any money from the dealerships i don't give any money to the dealerships it's a completely moneyless transaction Basically, I give them free advertising. They let me borrow a car for an hour. That's it. That's how that works. I started doing that four years ago. I was at the gym one night and I was like, you know what? I want to do this full time. How can I get access to more cars? Well, luckily for me, the town next to me had a bunch of car dealerships, Naperville. So I drafted up basically a resume. At the time, I had 14,000 subscribers. Um, and I had done like 300 reviews maybe. And I said, hey, I need to borrow your car for about an hour. I'll give you free advertising. I'll sign whatever you want me to sign, blah, blah, blah. And it's completely free. I don't want any money. And that was a big selling point, especially for Toyota of Naperville. They're like, oh yeah, hundred percent. You just have to borrow a car for an hour and it's free advertising, hundred percent. So that's what got my foot in the door. And Toyota of Naperville has been my longest lasting relationship 
um, and honestly, one of the easiest ones, because a lot of other places I'll work directly with salesmen and I kind of work off of their schedule. With Toyota of Naperville, I just come in, ask for stock numbers, they know me, and it's pretty good. I don't know where that plow guy went, and it's kind of making me nervous. So I literally just went in and asked, but the biggest thing that I always tell people is have some type of, not resume, portfolio. Portfolio is what I mean. Have some type of portfolio that they can reference. Not only say, hey, I want to film cars, but show them this is what the end product would most likely look like. If I came to them and was like, hey, I wanna review cars, and they're like, have you ever done it before? And I said, no, they probably don't wanna be the guinea pig. So that's my reasoning there. So I had probably about 300 videos. Now that's a little much, but I had about 300 videos that I had already filmed that I could show Toyota and say, hey, you know, I have some experience with this. This isn't my first rodeo. Here's what I can do for you. And I lucked out because Toyota of Naperville also owns uh, Chevy of Naperville and Lexus of Naperville. So by hitting it off with one, I kind of got a three in one deal. Um, and a, a, a thing that I still, I film at Toyota of Naperville almost every Friday, which has been awesome. And so it's given me a really consistent stream of cars. That's how I'm able to upload five videos a week. And from October to December, I do every single day of the week. That's how I'm able to sustain that throughout the year. And especially this time of year, obviously no one has their nice cars out um, in the winter time like this. Um, so, you know, the cool fun cars, um, I don't, uh, my, me talking is in the reflection. I don't like that. Obviously no one has their fun cars out in the winter time. So this gives me the ability to still make content, still drive, I think still interesting cars and things like that and get more of the corporate stuff out of the way in the winter. So during the summer I can drive most of the fun stuff. Um, we'll click on valet mode, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, that's how I got started with dealerships. And it's all about making connections. Be personable, be flexible with their schedule. If they say be here at eight, be there at 7.55. Like, you know, being on time is late. I do try to live by that, <laughs> being on time is late. I try to be early to almost everything I can. And a lot of the times I'll show up early, then wait, and then the second it turns 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. or whatever, um, I'm there, I'm ready, you know, ready to go. Um, being very poignant, being very professional um, has gone a long way with dealerships. Um, and then just being very transparent with them. Don't promise them things that won't come. If they say, how many views do your videos actually get? Ballpark it, but don't overestimate. And the biggest thing I would usually say to dealerships is I would usually say like, oh, like I can't guarantee you any views. Here's what my last couple of videos have done. Here's what maybe, is my phone falling? Hey, hey, I would usually tell them, hey, here's my last couple of videos. Here's what they've done. Or for Toyota, I had done a Corolla. So I was like, hey, this is, you know, what a Corolla video did for me. Um, just be real with them. Be upfront with them. Uh, you know, businesses and, and people really respect that um, I've found. So that's my, that's my TED Talk. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. All right, so now is the time to do the exterior shots. Now, I normally do this inside of the test track on this little strip because it's gated off. You're supposed to be able to drive through it, but for some reason, they've always had it gated off. So I know I'm out of people's way when I film. It is still covered in snow. My friend with the snow plow, whoever they may be, is still plowing and that area is not cleared. I don't wanna get the Elantra stuck in the snow. So I'm in the parking lot next to the test track. I used to film a lot more exteriors here, um, but I haven't in the past just because why leave the test track when I don't have to. Um, but that's why all of the thumbnails when I film at dealerships look similar because I film it on that same little strip um, that I'm showing here now. So we're gonna do the exteriors. This is my least favorite bit when it's cold outside. My favorite part when it's warm outside, but. Uh, it is not warm today. And someone in a Toyota Highlander is trying to drive up the hill in the snow and they're sliding. Yay, Midwest. This has to be one of the coldest days of the year. The wind is absolutely brutal. By the way, that's all ice. That's not like clear road, that's all ice. So gotta love it around here, huh? Just did the walk around and before we leave this parking lot, oh, get out of here wipers. 
there is this sign for the Naperville test track and it's funny seeing how many logos have changed and how many businesses have gone. The Dodge and Chrysler logo down at the bottom, that's changed. Saturn obviously is gone. Pontiac is gone. Um, and just how many places have changed hands. One last thing I wanted to show off, something new for 2023 that I missed in the last time I did the behind the scenes of reviews and my phone is sliding again, I swear to God. Oh, stop. I use a 360 camera now. So this is an Insta360 1X2, spelled out one and then just X and the number two. Um, and I have this really nice extendable pole. It goes really, really far. So the out of vehicle views that you're seeing now that is all done off of this. And how I do that is I lower the window, extend it all the way out, and then you can kind of see it outside. I usually rest the pole in between the side mirror and the car. So I'm gonna be doing it kind of like that. It's hard to see, but oh, you can see there's the camera. Um, and that's the shot that you're seeing now. And I'll show you how to edit that um, here in a second. But yeah, that's how it does it. It edits the pole out itself. I don't know how it does that, but it does. And so that's how I get those cool sort of out of car shots. So now we're back at Toyota, time to pack my stuff up and head home. All right, right back in its spot next to the Versa, which I have a review of and a Camry. Time to return the key, test track pass and license plates that they give me. So we're done filming for the day. Now, today was not a super normal day, but I wanted to keep filming because I feel like there isn't any normal day when it comes to filming. It's not a nine to five. You have to be able to adapt and things. Today, had to adapt to the weather. It's coming down a lot harder with the snow now. Can't really film cars, and if I can, the video's just not gonna come out as good. So I ended up doing the Elantra video. I'll still put that one out. I'm not super stoked that it was in the snow, but what can you do? But I am not going to film the trailblazer that I was normally originally going to do. It is what it is. You know, sometimes I'll get here and cars aren't here. They're sold, but the website says that they aren't. Sometimes I'll get here and the batteries are dead or cars are getting cleaned or serviced and I can't drive them. Something comes up. I've had it where I've been filming a car and then Toyota or whoever will call me and say, hey, we have a customer waiting for that car like right now. So I have to abort the review and come back and give the keys back. And unfortunately I have a couple of reviews that never got finished. So that's why I want to keep filming today. Normally I would do two to three cars at a dealership just to maximize, you know, if I'm already there might as well. Um, but today just one car and that's what it is. So I'm going to go grab lunch and then I'll show you guys how to edit that 360 video. Cause I got a couple questions about that. Portillo's, chop salad, forget about it. Done with lunch, time to go home and we'll edit up that 360 video. So luckily the editing process is actually really easy. So the Insta360 comes with its own editing software and all you do is you upload the footage into the software and then you use this little box thing to sort of outline what you want it to focus on. And then it's a little slow and I've sped it up here, but it just, does it. it just tracks whatever you have on screen and every once in a while it'll lose the track so you just have to reset it just have to redraw the square no big deal at all and then it comes out looking like this you just hit export bada bing bada boom and you get some really really cool footage so that's how i get that i hope you guys enjoyed the vlog today something a little bit different that's how i film cars at car dealerships normally i can do between two and three in a day i try to shoot three i mentioned that earlier whatever today with the weather just didn't really have the cards in my favor but that's okay that's what happens hopefully next week i'll be able to go back and film three or four or whatever it might be i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys want to see more behind the scenes vlogs and things like that please let me know what kind of topics you want us to see what you want to see in a vlog um, and things like that but i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll catch you in the next one take care